No, that's wrong. No, that's wrong. No, that's wrong. No, that's wrong. That's wrong. Really, Shuichi? You couldn't have just said no? Danganronpa is a visual novel series about incredibly talented students being trapped inside a school, beach, or school again. The only way for one of them to escape is to kill another student and get away with it after a class trial. If you're new to the series and you don't want anything to be spoiled, I've already said too much. I'd encourage you to play the games and then come back to this video, but if you've already watched or played the games, or you're just some kind of spoiler junkie, then I'll keep talking. Each of the main series games, 1, 2, and V3, have a drastically different protagonist, the naive and optimistic Makoto Naigi, the outspoken and cynical Hajime Hinata, and the stubborn extremist Kaede Akamatsu. And spoiler, spoiler, spoilers, 3, 2, 1, the self-doubting and passive Shuichi Saihara. There is a reason he's not in the thumbnail. But which of them did it better? Which of these four designated do-gooders did their darndest to deliver their dubious and deceitful student body from the dastardly dangers of Danganronpa? Moral Makoto, Heroic Hajime, Keen Kaede, or Shai Shuichi? Ladies and gentlemen, a series has been discovered, so let the analysis begin. There's not enough people with originality, so here I am to save the day, Janiac. I refuse to give up. I refuse to get bored. I refuse to throw it all away. I refuse to despair. First, let me start by saying I'll only be covering each character's appearance in their respective games, analyzing their personalities, ultimate talents, and trial skills. Look, if I covered all the extended material, I'm pretty sure Makoto would win by a landslide. Which leads us to our first protagonist, Makoto Naegi, the all-loving, easily approachable, and pure-hearted member of his class. I mean, seriously, this guy is such an innocent person that his darkest secret was that he used to wet the bed. Because Makoto only sees the good in people, once the killing game starts, he's in disbelief that anyone around him could be the killer. And even though this optimistic point of view is a great attribute to have, it's also kind of his weakness. See, Makoto's not dumb, he's just a bit naive. His kindness gets taken for granted on so many occasions that you'd wonder how he makes it through life day by day. That is, until you remember his ultimate talent. Makoto is the ultimate lucky student, though personally I think Ultimate Social Butterfly would have been a more fitting title. Makoto doesn't see his ultimate talent as anything useful because it often causes him a great deal of misfortune before actually revealing itself to actually be good, hence why he dubs himself the ultimate unlucky student. But don't be fooled, it's the same talent that leads him to not only solve the killing games, but to come out a survivor. This is demonstrated most in the class trials, where his talent goes hand in hand with his own deductive reasoning skills, the only thing slowing him down being his inability to put a few obvious clues together, usually resulting in his luck, good memory, or colleagues to fill in the blanks for him. There's never only one choice to make. There's no way I'll allow things to end this way. The future everyone has created for us should have more possibilities than that. Let's leave this place with confidence, and from there we can just create it on our own! The future that we want! Hajime Hinata is a sharp contrast to Makoto Naiki. While Makoto is optimistic and reserved, Hajime is cynical and outspoken. It comes as no surprise, then, that once the killing game starts, Hajime's reaction is a bit more panicked. Immediately, he believes without a doubt that anyone around him could be the killer. Despite this, Hajime is a pretty friendly person, and he's pretty smart too. Many of his free time events involve him helping his fellow classmates become more self-confident. But Hajime's biggest problem is his insecurities about not remembering what his ultimate talent is. And unfortunately, we later discover he doesn't have an ultimate talent. This insecurity grew so much that he put himself through an experiment to gain an abundance of talents, but in the process, he lost aspects of his true identity. A tragic hero indeed. 
What makes this especially tragic is the fact that despite not having an ultimate talent, Hajime seems to handle class trials very well. It's amazing that with no apparent experience, he's able to rationalize things for himself, only calling for the aid of his colleagues if necessary. Whether or not this is a mark of the experiment's success is left ambiguous, but it's such a shame that Hajime can't even see his own talents, even if he's not the best at them. Well, this is as far as it goes. I couldn't do it. I couldn't get to the mastermind. For the V3 characters, I will only be referring to their in-game personalities, not their real-world personalities, so Faithless Kaede and Killer Detective Shuichi will not be spoken about. Why? Because those personalities weren't the ones playing the actual killing game. Now, the similarities between Kaede Akamatsu and Makoto Naigi are very apparent, both being positive thinkers who are concerned for others' feelings, but where the two differ is in their confidence. Kaede is so confident that at times it would seem she's a little too confident. Her assertiveness is one of the two things that sets her apart. In fact, unlike Makoto and Hajime, who reluctantly become their respective team's leader, Kaede takes the leadership role, not hesitating once the opportunity presents itself. But unfortunately, Kaede tends to take things too far. One of the most notable cases being that time she led her team through the death road of despair. The second thing that sets her apart is, well, she's the only protagonist that has actually attempted to kill someone in the killing game. Even though the person she tried to kill was the mastermind themselves, my point still stands. She didn't even discuss her plan with anyone, she just did it because she thought it was the right thing to do. Fortunately though, Kaede does have a heart, and she doesn't take advantage of the first blood perk. Instead, she spends the trial aiding her colleagues come to the right conclusion, without completely spoiling it. Aiding her during this trial is her ultimate talent. You wouldn't think that being the ultimate pianist, piano player, would help much in a killing game. But quite the contrary. During mass panic debates, Kaede is able to hear each person's argument independently making it very easy for her to find contradictions in their stories. That being said, she also lies during the trial, and she isn't even very good at lying. Would you really trust a girl that commits perjury? Speaking of which... I won't forgive this game that treats us like toys. And if this is what the world wants... Then I reject that world! I'll fight the world that inflicts suffering for entertainment! Would you really trust a guy that commits perjury? Especially one with little to no social skills and an overwhelming degree of self-doubt? But where does Shuichi Saihara's lack of self-assurance come from? Well, it actually relates quite a bit to his ultimate talent. You see, being the ultimate detective may seem like a great talent, especially for a killing game, but as Shuichi points out, it's a talent that only works after people die. He can't really save anyone with it. This self-hatred is further cemented by how passive Shuichi can be, often going along with what others ask him to do without even considering his own feelings. However, Shuichi is definitely in his element once he enters a class trial seeing as how he's the first protagonist whose ultimate talent perfectly suits the killing game. In order to be deemed the ultimate detective, he would have already needed a little bit of experience solving cases before. Shuichi is without a doubt the most capable and qualified of all the protagonists, even figuring out that one of the students must be working with Monokuma right away. He even lies more convincingly than Kaede but his lack of drive prevents him from taking charge like she does. Hello there. How do I look? Which Danganronpa protagonist is the best out of all of them? Well, I'm gonna let you guys decide. Yeah, that's right. Vote for whichever protagonist you think is the best one in my community tab, and after you pick, let me know why in the comments below.
I'll have you know that I've been a fan of the Danganronpa series since it first hit the PS Vita here in North America. Remember this old thing? I'm the only person in my neighborhood that has one. So yeah, I'm not a new fan. In fact, two of my earliest videos were Danganronpa related. Danganronpa first released in November of 2010, so pretty soon it'll be 10 years old, so I'm gonna say it now, happy 10th year anniversary, Danganronpa. Remember to vote for which protagonist you think is the best in my community post. I'd really like to see who you guys choose. I want to say a big thank you to everyone who's been supporting the merchandise. We received a lot of purchases this past week, and I can't say anything other than thank you. You guys have been great. Remember, if you have any ideas for merchandise, I'm all ears. Also, if you're subscribed to this channel, be sure to subscribe to my backup channel, Janiac Tunier. I'll leave a link in the description below. Until then, I'll leave you with this.